So together we just added the Yoast plugin. Let's explore it a little bit. The thing about plugins is that there's no real consistency on how you use them. We saw that, for example, Team Yoast created this plugin, and over here, Snap Creek created this plugin, Matt Mullenweg created this one, and Automatic created that one. And if you don't get the joke, Matt Mullenweg founded the company Automatic. It's his company. <laughs> And that's why it's his plug in there. Now the consistency is, inconsistency is, you will see all your plugins installed in one screen to manage them, but to use them usually is very inconsistent. Sometimes a plugin creates a new entry. The ones we've used so far do that. They've been the best ones that they create a really easy to find entry. Some of the plugins hide themselves in other spots. So I'm going to make some notes here because a lot of times people uh, get a plugin and they don't know how to use it because they can't even find it. Let me show you the top places where the plugin might install itself. Uh, after installing the plugin, here is where they may end up definitely in the plugin screen always where you can update or uninstall them or also mm, activate and deactivate sidebar you may get them in the main sidebar over here. Easy to find on the left side. We're seeing in this example we have SEO by Yoast and Duplicator. And each one has its own little menus. Duplicator has the About section, its own little settings, Pro. So it, it's got a paid version as well that it's recommended. SEO by Yoast uh, gives you a dashboard, search console, go premium, again the paid version. This also gives you a notification. Some plugins give you notifications like this one. So there's something here that it's alerting us to. Those, that's one of the easy spots. Another place where plugins could appear is under settings. Under the built-in settings screen. A new option. At the moment, we don't have an extra plugin that goes there, but when we add the redirection plugin, that's where that one ad adds to. It doesn't give itself its own menu item. Redirection, we'll see it tucks itself into settings. Under settings, we'll have a new option redirection. Yes? Later on, when you talk between the different between plugins and widgets. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. <coughs> a good point. I'll make a I'll make a note of that, and I'll come back to that. Yes. Okay. Thank you. The other place where these could install too is tools. This one's a little less common. Under the built-in tools screen. Uh, there's nothing really there at the moment, but it could go there too. A plugin could end up under tools. So there's these different places. There's no consistency, unfortunately. Uh, every developer seems to maybe choose an option. And if you, if you doubt, you can always find which ones are installed or deactivated uh, under here. So sometimes in this screen, it also tells you where to go to and use it. None of these really say that. Some of them, I've seen some that says, find it under X. And sometimes looking at it here also gives you further <coughs> options. So here's the settings, which is the same as settings on the menu. 
in the dashboard somewhere. So they're all a little different. Frequently asked questions, premium, etc. Yoast is one of the advanced ones, so it put itself on the left side over here and at the top. There's a brand new item at the top there, notifications. Before we look at that, I'll also make one more note about plugins, a couple more, couple more notes. Uh, recommendation, or let's say tip. Uh, use one plugin for one task. Under the recommended or popular, I, I think I saw Yoast and another one called All-in-One SEO Pack. Both of them do the same thing. Both of them are there to help you optimize your site to get traffic. So the Yoast plugin and one called SEO, All-in-One SEO Pack. They both do the same thing. You only want one of them because they're both trying to do the same thing. They're going to step over each other's toes. When we talk about e-commerce, we're going to look at two big popular e-commerce solutions. You only want one of them because they're both trying to do the same thing. They're both taking up your resources. They're both trying to do the same thing. They may be conflicting, slowing down your site, etc. So use one plugin for one task. Uh, keep only plugins that you have active. So that means don't have seven deactivated plugins that are not doing anything. They're taking up your resources, they're taking up your bandwidth, they're taking up your server space. They could be old code that is problematic, so keep only plugins that you have active. Once in a while I deactivate a plugin for some reason, and then I reactivate it because I need to use it. So don't have plugins hanging around that you're not using. I would delete them if there's no if they're serving no purpose. I would delete them. So update plugins on a regular basis. So change you can reinstall the plugin, but the problem I believe is that you'll lose any customization. So if you use the plugin to do specific changes to your site, and you uninstall and reinstall, you'll have to redo the changes because it's new out of the box. Update plugins on a regular basis. Asterisk for the footnote. See discussion on updates, which we haven't had yet. So you should keep your plugins updated, but don't update your plugins until we talk about it. That will be something we'll talk about eventually. Okay, so before we go use Yoast, I'm still in the plugins screen, and I'm going to follow one of my pieces of advice. Which one? Keep only plugins that, have, that you have active that you want. So let's delete that Hello Dolly plugin. How do you delete plugins here? You just click delete. Now notice, I would like to, for some reason, delete duplicator, but there's no delete. Hello Dolly is not active, so I can delete it. Yoast is active, so I can't. Akismet is not active, so I can delete it. If you wish to delete plugins, they have to be deactivated first. You don't, don't do this, but if I deactivate Duplicator, then I get to be able to delete Duplicator. <coughs> so if you're not able to delete a plugin, make sure it's deactivated. You also have bulk delete, which is you click the little check mark next to seven plugins that you don't need, and then under bulk action, select delete. I'm going to keep a kismet, but I'm just showing you we can select more than one to do a bulk action, such as delete them all at once, activate them all at once, deactivate them, update them at once. So instead of clicking manually delete, 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 select them and bulk delete them. We only want to delete Hello Dolly at the moment. Before you delete, there's no confirmation and there's no undo. So if you're going to delete, make sure you know what you're deleting. Because if you just choose delete, I guess now there is a confirmation. That's good. There was no confirmation before, but now there's no undo. 
So whatever features it had are gone. Now, plugins versus widgets, it's kind of an apples to oranges comparison, obviously in that they are both fruit, but they are different fruit, uh, in that plugins give you extra features and widgets give you extra features. But the difference is oftentimes that you can you get widgets from plugins when you want to add more widgets or activate more widgets they often come from a plugin or a theme so a plugin may create a widget a widget may come from a plugin or a theme. Both widgets and plugins add extra features to your site. That's the big idea there. When I go look at my widgets screen, which is under appearance widgets, um, that should be another note, I guess, up here. After installing a plugin, you may also get new widgets. Appearance, widgets, you may get new widgets. We're going to see that when we add the e commerce plugin. E commerce plugin will have lots of settings and it will also give you new widgets, such as a widget to add a shopping cart to the footer of your site. Or a shopping cart up on the head, or you know, a product gallery in the sidebar. That would be a widget that was added, activated from a plugin. Let's explore the SEO plugin. Um, at the top here, hover over it, you get notifications. Click notifications to see what Yoast is trying to tell us. At the top, notifications. That takes us as if we had just clicked on the Yoast link anyway. Dashboard. So here it says problem. We have detected the following issue that affects the SEO. Huge SEO issue. I'm glad I installed this because I don't want a big SEO issue. Now what this is telling us is that we have an option that is blocking the search engines. We did that on purpose. And it's telling us here, if you go to your reading settings, we did this on purpose when we set up WordPress. We turned that on. We said, don't let the search engines find us. Our site is not ready for the search engines to find us. So Yoast here is telling us there's an issue there. You're hiding yourself from the search engines. We did it on purpose. If I go back, you can ignore it for the moment, or you can click the X to, to clear it. But I'm going to ignore it because I may forget to turn that off when I upload it to my real site. It's something we don't, it's something that I do get back to later in the class, but maybe for your purposes, keep it there to remind yourself. Yes. Um, I lost track of how you did. Probably Just click on the uh, on the little uh, on the number of Yep. Yeah. Notifications. And just the first one. Yeah, we were just so looking at the first one, right? That's a problem. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna take that under advisement. I've got a problem. I'll fix it later. And then other notifications. The notification wizard helps you to easily configure your site for optimal settings. You can do that on your own. You can explore that on your own. There will be various steps that it will ask you uh, to help you optimize your site. Um, what I really like about this plugin and related ones is that it helps you navigate the, the maze of SEO. When I teach the SEO class in there, I talk about that SEO is complicated, but not necessarily difficult. There's a lot of steps to do, 
a lot of check marks you need to check to optimize your site to get found. This plugin walks you through those steps to help you get found. So you, on your own later, can check the wizard to set up your site. This is also saying, why not connect your Google Search Console? If you take the SEO class, we, go, we talk about, in that class, connecting your website directly to the search engines to, again, help you get more traffic. Take that class to find out how to do that, follow that link to find out how to do that, or ask me during the break. But these are things that this plugin helps you set up that you might not have ever known to do, and you have a great site but no traffic. Well, this is one of the plugins that helps you get the traffic. The premium one that says starts as low as, I guess, $69 a year or some price, I don't know, um, gives you these features. Keywords, support, social preview, no ads. So the free one will give us a lot of features. The paid ones will give us more features. Uh, if you go back to the menu at the top, we had looked at notifications. If you hover over the keyword research, people always ask on uh, my SEO class, when we start to talk about uh, a keyword strategy, people always ask, well, is there like a list that I can go look at? What are the best keywords for my site? And there's no definitive answer that I can give because everyone's site is different. These keywords work best on this site, and these keywords work best on that site. Yoast gives us a way to do research to find out what are the best keywords to use on my site. So again, on your own, you would go look at the AdWords external link there to go do keyword research about the perfect keywords for my realty site, the perfect keywords for my tutoring site, the perfect keywords for my band's site. You go look at Google Trends. What are the trending terms that people are searching for? Are these terms that I could use to reach the right audience, to get found? And they've got an SEO book, most likely uh, a free version of it. So even more SEO tips and advice here. So those are suggestions, they don't automatically go into your website. Exactly, they, uh, they're suggestions, but you can apply them relatively easily in a way that I'll show in a moment. And SEO settings, that's the same as if we were looking at the dashboard. SEO settings dashboard. Dashboard problems general settings, features, security, you can look at that on your own. <clears throat> so Yoast plugin, use it to optimize your site for traffic. Follow the wizard to set up basics. Use the keyword research tools to optimize specifically. And uh, the last item we'll look on this, I forget the name of it, um, it's called, we'll see what it's called right now. The last way to use the plugin is like this. Go to a, your posts. And now we have the ability on a post by post basis to optimize each one. You have to sort of set settings of optimization for the whole site, but then you have to set SEO settings for each post. And that sounds like a lot of work, and it is. That's why when you hire an SEO company, they may charge you pretty well because it is work, it is effort, to go to each of the pages of your site to optimize each one to get traffic. You, knowing that you can do it yourself, you can obviously save the money, you're still not going to save the time though because it takes time and effort to optimize page by page. Doing my keyword research to find out what's the best keyword to use on my three-layer cake page still takes effort. 
But the way this works is every page will get a ranking in with a little color. Gray dot means I have not tried to optimize a page yet. Then we have the rankings of red, bad optimization, yellow and green, okay optimization, no, uh, yellow and orange, okay optimization, and then green, good optimization. So my goal is I'm going to try to optimize all of my pages to green as much as possible. For example, let's check this out. Under posts, click on how to bake a cake edit. We have a new box, SEO, Yoast. We have this brand new feature that will help us craft each one of our pages to get found. This is the fourth point I was going to make, focus keyword. The third point, use the keyword search, set your focus keyword page by page. post by post. Because technically, your about page should be optimized, your contact page should be optimized, your home page should be optimized, and then each post in your blog. So the way this works, you get a preview of what it may look like when someone does a search. It looks like a Google search result. The title of the of the article and the name of my site, the link. So imagine that was victor.com slash blog slash how to bake a cake. And then a snippet preview. In my case, this blog post just has a video. So nothing meaningful shows up there. Focus keyword. What is the what is the keyword that people may be searching for? And the keyword doesn't literally need to be one word. It should be more of a key phrase. So obviously I want people, when they search the word cake, to find my site, right? That's a trick question. Because cake is such a basic word. Everyone is going to show up. Two billion results. Everything that has ever had the word cake is going to show up on that Google search. Okay, I'm going to be more specific. People might search for how to bake a cake. That's a little better. People are going to search for that word. I'm going to use that as a starting point to optimize my site. Well, again, if I'm more specific, that still might be too generic. I might search for uh, people might search for how to bake a healthy cake. How to bake a healthy cake. <coughs> so the point of this is that now I have red. This updated right away. I have bad optimization in this page. If I'm trying to get found by how to bake a cake, how to bake a healthy cake, I'm not doing it right. Down here, it tells me all of, the, all of the things I've done wrong. All of these red items, all of these orange items, <coughs> green items. So the one thing I've done right so far is I have not used this focus keyword on my site yet. So I haven't tried to use this word yet on my site. Yes? Uh, I'm trying to get to where you are. You clicked posts, and then how to bake a cake, then what? Um, so you've edited the how to bake a, you're in the edit this post, right? You scroll down, and then you're going to have a little box there, Yoast SEO. So then here I've typed yes. in the keyword, how to oh, bake a okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I have all of these dimensions of SEO to help me get found. The more of these that I turn to green, the better. Yeah. Now, actually, the least red that I have is good. If I'm in orange or yellow, it's okay. Green is the best. But you are able to raise the stature or the optimization of this post by still having a couple of reds once in a while. Sometimes you can't do one of the suggestions for some reason. 
but you will be able to get green or the second best orange with, with some effort. What you don't want is the, is the gray, which you have not tried to optimize, or the red, which is bad optimization. So set focus keyword goal. Minimize pages, posts with red uh, mark. Uh, maximize pages and posts with green mark or orange. And gray. So right now, all of the pages on my site are gray. I have not optimized any of them. So at some point, I want to optimize them, the actual nuts and bolts. That's for the other class, the SEO class. I can guide us this far, and on your own, you can explore. You can uh, go to the help box. You can go to the frequently asked questions for Yoast. You can go premium. This is as far as I'll go with this plugin in general. I won't get too specific, but any questions on this plugin? Yoast. Where did you get the help? The help is going to be under the Yoast screen, SEO, and their help is up here on the Help Center. They have video tutorials. They have their site. Yeah, they uh, they have it under the Yoast dashboard. Yoast menu dashboard. And there's Help Center. So I've tried on one post. It's red. There's ranking for your SEO and readability. That's an important factor to take into account nowadays too, how readable it is, is it for people. Um, I don't put as much uh, credence on that one. I definitely do for the SEO. Yes? Uh, how did you make it switch from the gray to the red? Mine still is so gray. There was something in the header. I, I typed a focus keyword. OK, I did. And then I uh, clicked Update. And you clicked Update. So I want to, at some point, definitely before my site is live, go through all my posts and pages. Technically, you can even do it to your products. Once we get to products, you'll be able to optim optimize individual products. Again, that's a lot of effort. I'm going to sell 20 products, so I need to optimize 20 pages? Yes, is the short answer. And yes, is the long answer. You're going to need to optimize your whole site. That's why people get hired as SEO companies. They do this and many things. They have to figure out what are the keywords. Remember when I, uh, when I said, I, I teach this, but I'm part of a company that we do this. We get hired and we have to figure out their keywords for the business and what's going to help them get found and then apply them to the different pages and create pages. Maybe we figured out that one of the popular keywords is you know, healthy kids' snacks, but it's not used anywhere on the site. So we can create a page called Healthy Kids' Snacks and add the focus keyword and add the content and the text and all of the concepts of SEO, and that will help them get found. And the more of these that turn green or, or not red, the more you can get found. So it takes effort. Yes? Do you think about them, or do you get to the base in the Yes and no. The basic free Yoast only lets you do one keyword at a time. If you want to add more keywords, then it's going to say you need the premium version. You could remove a keyword and do another keyword and do one at a time, but it's that's one of the reasons why they have the paid, the paid version. Three words in there. Well, it's more like you can put one concept at a time. This is a little sentence here of several words, but it's one concept. 
If I want to add another concept, I need to upgrade. So that's the S, that's the Yoast SEO plugin. Any any questions on that before we go to other things? Yes. When you when you push something out, it'll say it's how to bake a healthy cake. No, uh, how to bake a healthy cake is the term that I think people will search for. So I, the tip down here is going to say you're not using that in your title. So I would have to change my title up here, how to bake a healthy cake, and then I'll turn one of these to green because I followed one of their one of their steps. So the all-in-one SEO pack is similar. It will also give you a spot to write a keyword. It will also rank your pages. But you don't want both of them. Sometimes people think, I'm going to install Yoast and all-in-one, and I'll get double the SEO power. No, they're both doing the same thing, and therefore they will conflict. So that goes back to my tip. Only use one plugin for one task. My task here is to set up SEO. Yoast will also let you connect with your search engine, which is what Jetpack also lets you do. So we want to use one or the other. Question? Is, on the plugins, is there a way to know how big the file is? Yeah. Um, where is that at? I think it's going to be... Let's see. Where is that at? I think I've seen it under plugins. When you, when you edit a plugin... Maybe not here. I know it definitely shows you in cPanel. When you install this on Bluehost or GoDaddy, you'll be able to check your file manager in cPanel to see the sizes of your files on the server. But in WordPress itself, it doesn't look like it'll tell you how much this plugin takes. So if we're loading up, we can put in the return and if we dump that plugin, we're going to gain X amount of megabytes. Yes. The, the problem, of course, is uh, some plugins might be a little, a little bloaty, but we need them. Right. Uh, so unless there's an alternative that does something similar, similar and is smaller, we need to use that plugin. <coughs> okay, let's look at um, another one from my notes. Um, let's add a new plugin. So if you go back to your plugins screen and add new, let's add one here that I really recommend called redirection. Let's search for redirection. It should be the one by John Godley here. This is the one you want. These little flowers. This one is getting on a little bit in age. It's getting to six months but it is compatible with our latest version. It's one that I recommend. It's got almost three quarters of a million installations, pretty good stars, two and nearly 300 reviews. This is, a, this is a really useful plugin. It's kind of technical, but we'll look at it together. This is a plugin to manage 301 redirections and keep track of 404 errors without requiring knowledge of Apache.ht access files. So what happens is, You've got these links on your site. I might have victorsbakery.com slash about us. And I decide to change it to victorsbakery.com slash about. So any traffic that I was getting previously to slash about us will get broken because then now I have 
slash about. I'm giving directions to someone to go to about us, but it doesn't exist anymore. I have about, and it does not fix itself. The default is it's a broken link. Redirection helps you fix that. It redirects traffic from a broken link to the right link. And in the old days, you had to write weird code in a special file to fix that. This plugin, you don't have to write any code. You identify the broken link, you identify the correct link, and it does it for you. So once you find redirection, click to install and to activate. And then you try finding where it got installed to. It doesn't give itself a main menu item. So install and then activate. So once you activate that, It tells you you've got a new active icon, redirection, manage your 301 redirects, we have settings, deactivate edit, it's somewhere. It's under tools. Without me telling you, one way you could have found it is if you click in this plugin, it has a settings, if you click settings there, it took me to tools redirection. So again, there's no consistency with these things. But click on Tools Redirection. It's a very boring looking plugin, but it's very useful. Uh, this, keep tracks, this keeps track of broken links, and it also helps you fix them. So the way it works is, okay, what's the source address? What's the broken link? And what's the correct link? So, in my case, I may have had originally, just as an example, I had a link that was about dash us, and then I changed it to about the company. So it's the old link, what's the new link? The, D, the, the other options here, match and action and all that, those are defaults are fine. The big idea is what's the old link, what's the new link, add it, and now this is automatically going to redirect your traffic. So when someone visits the old broken link, it goes automatically without any delay or, or any input to the user to the right place. And something like this is also important for SEO. It's recommended, yes, because if you don't put the hyphens, then it, it's a run-on word that is not doesn't make sense. With the dashes or the hyphens, then they're real words that can be understood. The way we know we have a broken link is in the redirection screen, here's a list of all of our 404s, all our broken links. I'm going to force a broken link right now. I'm going to go to the address of my site slash amazing products. There's no page on my site called amazing products. So if I go back in redirection, it's going to say you, someone visited a broken link. They tried to go to the amazing products screen. So the 404s, it's just the, the internal code broken link. So someone on May 16th at 8 p.m. 8.20 p.m. tried to visit Amazing Products page. Then we had a redirect to take them to the real link. So instead of Amazing Products, it's actually Great Products. So that screen tells you what's broken. This screen tells you, lets you fix it, add it, and it will then behind the scenes, keep it fixed. For you, you have nothing to do at the moment. You don't have a real site. Uh, no one's visiting your site. But if you have a real site on the real internet, uh, I would install that redirection plugin and let it monitor things and then check it once in a while. 
once a week, once a month, some amount of time, depending how much traffic you get on your site. So on my notes here, redirection plugin used to track your 404s, broken links, and fix them via 301s, redirections. Check your logs, check your 404 logs on a regular basis, once a month. Add more redirects as necessary. Purpose to help your SEO. The search engines won't rank you so well if you've got broken links. The search engines want to put websites on the top positions that, that are well designed, that don't have broken links, and have real content. So this is uh, something that you need to keep track of because the search engines keep track of. And as you fix these, then it, it helps your SEO, your ranking. Now this plugin also is kind of interesting because I, I've worked with several sites and this 404 page, this is also the screen where I see people trying to hack the site. This is where I see people are trying to find this broken plugin, trying to find the broken code. So I see the list of these sites that are, I mean the list of plugins that are, uh, that are broken. So you get an IP address, which is a location of someone's computer somewhere in the world, and you can go click on that and it'll show you a map and it shows there's traffic coming in from, you know, Brazil, and there's traffic coming in from Ukraine, and there's traffic coming in from, uh, you know, uh, Moscow and such, you know, why am I getting traffic from, from Belize? My business isn't there. So you're going to see kind of, it's interesting and a little scary that you're seeing people, I'm, I'm getting hacked, uh, attempting. Yes? How can I get to the redirection log? log? Well, uh, log? well, you have to go over to the tool screen and then redirection. And I'm currently looking at the 404s link. So as a webmaster, this is one of the things we have to look at on a regular basis. And uh, don't be surprised if you see odd things here. So it's not that flashy, it's very straightforward, it's very utilitarian, but that's the redirection plugin. Any, any questions on that before we look at a couple of other plugins? <coughs> Okay, so uh, when and if you find those, do you just delete them or can you uh, block them? Or? Well, if you find those kinds of intrusions, there's not much to do about it because we don't have the tools for that. We, we can't, you know, fight back against the hackers ourselves. We have to let the professionals do that. The thing we could do is we could add a redirection to redirect to like some sort of warning page. I've done that. I don't know how effective it really is, but uh, after monitoring these and I add the redirection to, you know, some sort of page here that says, you know, stop hacker. And there I write a message. And I write a message that says like, your, if you've reached this page, you, you've you've done something you're not supposed to, we've logged your address, you're, it will be forwarded to the authorities, who knows if that will ever really work, it'll just scare someone off. The, so there's nothing really we can do about that. Just move on, but that's letting you know that you know those plugins have a problem and, and uh, kind of for your information. So you change the plugin itself, you rename the plugin that someone was trying to no, you just don't use it. 
don't use the plugin because it's it's a known vulnerable plugin. So if it was about us, then you would change. You wouldn't use about us. You would change it to about the store or something. Well, that's like different. That. That's that's a page. Right. We're talking about a plugin. If there's a plugin that is that it has a problem, I would not use the plugin or delete the plugin. Well, like your Twitter plugin. Would you use yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Would that be a warning to update that plugin? Yeah, but from what I've seen, uh, those plugins are, are like abandoned plugins, and people, hackers, know that that plugin is bad. So let's look at all of the sites possible, and if they have that plugin, we've got a we've got a skeleton key in. So I would just avoid those plugins. If I get consistently here 404 errors about these plugins, I would avoid those plugins. Yes. Would uh, the IP number uh, you can tell where the uh, if you click the link, it'll show you a map. Yeah, it won't show me a map here because so zero, zero, zero. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because I did this on purpose myself. I made, I made a broken link. The address is me. Zero, zero, zero. But in the real world, you're going to see real addresses, and you can click the link to go see a map. You will see a map of where it came from. Yeah, because then you'll see a computer that, that's coming from China, and I can't do anything there. The U.S. law doesn't apply. I see a computer that's coming from Mexico. I can't do anything there. Maybe I see a computer coming from Texas. Okay, it's in the U.S. Maybe we can do something about it. But the thing is that we these addresses here, these IP numbers are unreliable. You you can change it. People can change it. So today I might have address one two three seven, and tomorrow I can change it to one two three three. So even that number doesn't have much value. It doesn't shouldn't really show it. But yeah, that's the address of someone's computer somewhere in the world at that moment. Okay, let's look at uh, let's look at Jetpack. This is a really nice plugin. Before that, actually, let's open a new window and let's go to Jetpack.com. This is a big, famous plugin enough that it's got its own website. Jetpack. There's the free version and there's a the paid version. Grow and secure your WordPress site. Jetpack, the company. So behind the scenes, WordPress is. Is by is from the company Automatic, right? Matt Mullenweg invented WordPress about ten years ago. Formed the company Automatic. Automatic then ha is behind WordPress.com, WordPress.org, Jetpack.com. So it's all part of the same family. Uh, Jetpack is a plugin that gives you different features. If you scroll down, it gives you more themes. So we had a bunch of themes to choose from in the in the theme marketplace, and here are like 165 like handcrafted curated themes. Anyone can create a theme and pu publish it, and it can be great, and then they never update it. Anyone can create a plugin, and it's great for a while, and, and then they lose interest because it's a losing proposition, and less people are buying the premium version. This Jetpack one. They have themes here too, from the company Jetpack, which is doing well, so they can um, they can afford to give away these free themes and such. We have also other traffic and SEO tools. So there are some tools in Jetpack that also do what Yoast does. So you want to use either or. You don't want to use something that they both use. You'll be able to see what they both are once you install it. Once you install it, you'll see what they share in common. The way these concepts work is that Jetpack has these features enabled of Jetpack. There's the stats feature, the monitor feature. This is what I said. Jetpack is a Swiss Army knife. It has lots of features. You don't have to turn them all on. You don't have to use them all. Uh, Glenn here was interested in security and backup, so he used the protect feature, the manage feature, the verification tool, the mobile theme feature, and the social sharing feature. 
Um, other things here, fast content, he enabled Photon, which speeds up his site. If we look at features, if we look at features again, these are sort of like, uh, like combinations. If I want cool design aspects, I can learn to activate certain features of Jetpack. If I want to grow my site, get more traffic, here's what I would uh, activate. So let's say I'm interested in growing my site, so I can go to learn more. How can I get more visitors? Uh, it tells you here what to set up. Site stats, monetize, verification. Google Analytics, all of that. Then there's various plans. There's the free and personal. So the completely free one gives you the core services, 165 themes, basic security, etc. If you pay, you get all the basics plus more, such as support, tech support. If something's not working, you can get in contact better tech support than basic, and then that's personal. Then you've got uh, business. So if you're running a business, here's other prices for more features. <coughs> support, documentation, news, They had a discount during Small Business Week, 20% discount. So you can look at jetpack.com on your own. That's something there that's a lot of information you can look at on your own. I'm going to go back to our site. I'm going to install the Jetpack plugin. Go back to Plugins. Add new plugin, find the Jetpack plugin, install it and activate it, and then we'll look at some of its features. <coughs> Jetpack is one of the plugins that takes up. Uh, a, lot, a lot, not a lot, but comparatively a lot of space on the server compared to some of these other basic plugins because it has a lot of features. I would say around 12 to 12 to 50 megabytes or so. So comparatively everything else is one or two or five megabytes and Jetpack can be large-ish, but still much smaller than a video. A video is going to be like 500 megabytes. A song is going to be you know, 7 megabytes. All right, so I activated Jetpack, and we have a brand new feature. Because it comes from officially the Jetpack, the uh, WordPress company, look at that, they get a brand new item on the left side. Yes? Yeah, I found it. Jetpack by WordPress, but I, there was another step you said we need to find where we just activated. So, uh, I think I made a mistake, so I was happy to do it. No, no, you did do it right. You activated. So you're done. Cool. So we've got it activated, installed, and I had a brand new item here, whatever that icon means. In the old days, I've been using Jetpack a while, and in the old days, it looked like a little jetpack. And now it's a little abstract, kind of maybe sort of yin yang thing, maybe. <coughs> That's the Jetpack icon. Let's go look at the dashboard of Jetpack. Currently in development mode, some features are disabled because your site lacks a dot. Well, it realizes that we're not on the real internet, so not all of the features will be active. For example, the, the site speed up feature. 
once we put our site on the real internet, well, there'll be a feature that we can speed up our site on the internet. But we can't use that feature yet because we're not on the real internet. We're on localhost. So it will alert us of that later on. Um, eventually, I'll be able to activate site stats. This is really nice. It'll tell us our traffic. It'll tell us what our most popular pages are. It'll tell us what the keywords people use to find our site. But we can't use it yet because we're not on the real internet. We're in developer's mode. We're in localhost. Again, some things are not active. Like, I would like to protect my site that people don't try to log in and hack it and such. Well, it's not a real site yet, so that's not a good thing. Cannot back up yet. Cannot monitor if the site is down. Eventually, we'll get all those great features. What we can activate on some things is over here, for example, um, we can go to settings. Yeah, we're looking at the dashboard, and if on the top right we go to settings, there are some things that we can activate. Extra features regarding writing, sharing, discussion, traffic, security. So again, I might think, well, what are the security features I need to protect my site? Uh, not a lot of them are active because you're not active on a real server yet. And some of them are premium versions, like backup. Underwriting. What do we have? One option here under writing media. Display images, images and galleries in a gorgeous full screen browsing experience. The default is you upload a picture and people click to view the picture and it doesn't, it's the picture and that's it. If I activate this, it shows my picture is even nicer. It shows a nice and full screen, it shows with back and forward buttons, it shows a better gallery. We can turn that on. Writing. Under writing. And then we'll see media. Custom content types, testimonials. If I want to add testimonials to my site, portfolios, optimize my site for smartphones. So you can explore these on your own, but we have sharing, add sharing buttons to your posts. So that's pretty popular, pretty useful. I write an article, and I want people to share my site on Twitter. I can activate that, and people will be share, be able to share it on Twitter, on their LinkedIn, etc. Yes? I can't activate it. Huh, it may be corrupted. Let's take a look. Sometimes a plugin does get corrupted. and activate it again and try that again. <laughs> so all of these have a little info button on the right side to give you more information. What exactly is the sharing button? I can click on that, uh, learn more. That'll take you back to jetpack.com and give you more detail. Once you activate the sharing option, you'll have the ability for people to quickly post to keep quickly copy your post to their Facebook, or quickly share it to their LinkedIn, or send it to people on Skype, I guess. Print it, email it. That stuff is not built in to WordPress. And look at what 
look at what Jetpack gives us for the free version. It tells us how it works, how to set it up, what services are available. Not every service is here. I don't see Snapchat. Well, this one used to only really say Twitter and Facebook, and they've added more and more. And then for free, they've added more. Google+, Plus, Tumblr, etc. So they'll probably add these other features as time goes on. Sharing. Discussion. So we won't get a lot of these features just yet until we turn it on to a real server. I want to make a note that Jetpack is one of my favorite plugins to use. It gives you lots of features. Jack of all trades, plugin, many features. Most work only after uploading to a real site. Jetpack helps you, helps protect your site, speed it up, and add social sharing. What else? I think it has a better contact form, or it has a contact form. We had no contact forms built in, so a contact form. Okay, so uh, any any questions on Jetpack before we we look at another? Most of these plugins, I for my sites or our clients' sites, most of them we use the free plugins and they work just fine. The ones that we do pay for on a regular basis are Duplicator. That one because it's important; it copies your site. That's the one we do pay for, and uh, the price of it, you, you can look it up later. But I, I have in my handout number four, at the very end, I have there a link with, with, with a coupon, with an affiliate link. If you follow the link you have there, uh, I think you get a little discount, and then also I get a little... 5% of the sale or something. So just <laughs> full disclosure, that's an affiliate link. You don't have to follow it, but I do recommend Duplicator uh, Pro. It, it adds more features than the basic one. It, it lets you back up your site and automatically save it to your Dropbox. So you have double backup there. It lets you do a schedule, and it works better on bigger sites that have more pictures and text and video and all of that. The free one uh, seems to sometimes have difficulty dealing with big sites. It'll give you a warning. When we're doing the duplication part of it, it'll give you a warning saying your site is kind of big. And then the, the pro version uh, handles it better. What does it mean by schedule? Well, uh, duplicator right now, manually, we have to go in and create a new package. We have to make an archive, a backup. Scheduling will be that I set it that once a month, it'll make a backup for me and save the backup to my Dropbox or some other system. So if I forget to do it this month, it does it for me. Alright, so the... the, uh, the plugin that we're... we're gonna tease it for the moment and then we'll start to use it when when we come back next time. Uh, we won't do a second break. We'll just uh, do the lecture, and then we'll, we'll work until nine, and then we'll and then we'll wrap the lecture at nine. But before that, one more plugin 
to talk about is the is the e-commerce plugin. We're not going to use it yet, but I'm going to tease it. I'm going to show what it is. You can explore it if you want. But if we go to plugins, add new, search at the top, add new plugin, e-commerce, one word. So guess what? There's more than one plugin to do e-commerce online. There's 1,384 of them at the moment. Tomorrow probably there will be 1,385 because anyone can create a plugin and upload it. There's a cottage industry around WordPress. There's these ancillary industries that have popped up. People making and selling themes. People in making and selling plugins or widgets. Uh, people making stuff on top of WordPress. It's a big ecosystem. That's the cool thing about WordPress. It started off as this basic thing, and because they made their code open, people can then add to WordPress. The good and the bad, of course. The good is that there's lots of great plugins, lots of great themes. The bad is that there could be bad themes, bad plugins, nefarious authors that are preying on people and all of that. But the way we counteract that again is via reviews and star ratings and how often updates, active installations. So if I'm looking at it right here, e-commerce product catalog. Uh, great, it's got really high ratings, but only 9,000 uses. Updated four days ago, that's great. Untested was my current site. So there's a lot to choose from. But there's two big ones. We're going to look at both in the class. WooCommerce and WP Commerce. These are the two big ones. The biggest one, the most famous one, is WooCommerce. We'll look at that one second. But making our notes here. The two big uh, e-commerce plugins. WooCommerce and WP eCommerce. WooCommerce from the company Automatic. W WooCommerce used to be an, in an independent entity, and then WordPress themselves bought it. Automatic bought them. So now WooCommerce is part of the WordPress family. And the other one is WP eCommerce from WP eCommerce team. So I like them both. Uh, this one's got three and a half stars, 258 reviews, 40,000 installations, updated three months ago, untested. This has got four and a half stars, 2,000 reviews, a million installs, updated eight hours ago, untested. So just by the numbers, um, WooCommerce looks a lot better. But we're going to look at WP Commerce first next time, a little bit. Uh, and then we'll look at the WooCommerce next time. Uh, we're going to look at this one first because I feel that this one is better to work with as a beginner and some people's goals for e-commerce are perfectly satisfied with this one. And some people's goals for e-commerce are too advanced for this one. So instead of trying to go for the plugin that has all the bells and whistles that not everyone will need, we'll look at the, com at the commerce plugin that's a little more basic that might be good enough for most people. And um, then you will decide which of the two works best for your particular uh, goal. Because with both of these, we will be able to sell real or virtual products, goods and services. So we'll be able to, to ship you know, physical products. I will be able to sell music files, uh, videos. I will be able to do goods and services. I will be able to right, sell, if I'm a public speaker, I'll be able to sell public speaking engagements with both of them. It's just that the difference is this one needs a lot more setup than this one. Question. So let's say if I started building e-commerce mm -hmm. and I want to switch to e-commerce, mm -hmm. is it going to transfer all of my products that I have? It will, but every Every commerce plugin thinks they're doing it the right way. So you can transfer from different ones, but sometimes not as easy as we would like. So if you're going to do this for real on a real site, I wouldn't choose one yet. 
I would do what we're going to do about looking at both, and then decide what you like, and then commit to that one on your real site. Yes? What's the benefit of this company such a fantastic program for free? The free version works really well, but both of them, all of them, are going to have a paid version with more features. So let's say I get 9 out of 10 features for free, and that's all I need. The 10th feature is the, is the paid one. That's how they make their money. Oftentimes the paid feature is tech support. You don't get very good tech support from the free ones. Something breaks, I don't know how to fix it, well that's when I pay. And that's how they get out of it. And what about the security? Because you well, the security issue is that WooCommerce has been around so long, is so famous, they were bought by, by WordPress. So their security is, is one of the best ones. Because you should put your credit card number sites. No, but that'll be something we'll talk about in detail. We're not going to put the credit card numbers on their sites. We're going to use a more secure system later. So we need to do some setup and the security of the credit cards and everything will be will be dealt with, will be secure. They won't touch the credit cards. Most popular and, and uh, powerful questions. You're saying we're going to practice on uh, both of them? Yes, yes. yes. We're going to practice yes. on them both, yeah. The most popular and powerful, but needs a lot of setup. Um, Better out of the box. Get started selling quickly. Uh, the the selling quickly products I like that one better. WP Commerce. But when you want to do complex things like upselling, cross selling, bundling, and all of that that we'll talk about later, WooCommerce is definitely better there. It's selling individual products, handcrafted products, one-offs, uh, digital products, and all of that. This is just set up faster. So we're going to do both. We're going to do WP Commerce first, then WooCommerce. Yes? Would a company like Amazon use these and they have their own? They most likely have their own million-dollar system that they program themselves. Ten million-dollar system. Yeah. Twenty. For the cheap version, yeah. <laughs> Get started quickly. Um, can transfer your products from plugin to plugin, but often it's a bit tricky because each plugin believes their plugin is the best way to do it. And I've had that experience in companies going from one plugin to another, one system to another, and it's been tricky. It's doable, but it needed time and effort and setup, and it has worked. But uh, gladly, I haven't had to do it that many times because it was, it was effort. So once we look at both and you decide, all I need is WP Commerce, I'm ready to go, then you're done. But if you need more complexity, like, uh, uh, you know, you have to buy this product plus this product to get this deal, then that's WooCommerce. Uh, so... This is as far as I'll go. We're going to make a backup of the site. Uh, having the backup of the site then, after that, you can then install these and start playing with them. But we're going to make the backup first, and uh, then... You said we should download this VP e-commerce. Uh, we're going to make a backup first, and then we'll do the... and then you can no, download. We should do it or not? Not yet. Okay. We'll make the backup first. So let's make the backup. Uh, again, we'll do this together, but then you'll need to start to do it yourself uh, eventually because it's good practice. Yes? Okay, but with the WooCommerce, they allow you to do, it's uh, pretty much you can take, do, take the credit card and stuff like that. Yes, with both of them, you'll be able to take any credit or debit cards, even checks and CODs if you really want, and PayPal too. So any payment system, basically, you'll be able to accept with either one of them. All right, let's do the backup of the site again. Let's go to Duplicator Screen, click Packages, click Create New, and I'm going to add a note. 
So we'll add a note here. We'll talk about, um, we'll, I'll make a note here, site before e-commerce plugins. Because I personally prefer to make backups or copies of the site before I make big changes. I've had the experience that I know what I'm doing and then I know sometimes things could go wrong. So one reason to use this duplicator plugin is to make a copy of your site before you make a big change. So what I'll write is added redirection, added plugins, redirection, jetpack, and Yoast. Pending. Add e-commerce. Either WooCommerce or WP e-commerce. So click next. It'll scan your site. This is what I meant about the I pro think. version might be a little bit better. Question? This is where this is where the pro version. Right now our site is getting to 50 megabytes, getting bigger and bigger slowly. Once we add the commerce plugins and the actual products and all of that, it's gonna get bigger and bigger. I believe at about a hundred or maybe 120 megabytes. Free duplicator starts to recommend you might need the pro version because bigger sites require more storage and processing. The database is also getting larger. It was less than one megabyte on the first day, and now it's two and a half. It's going to keep getting bigger. If you, if any of you have an error here about large files, most likely you didn't delete your zip file in the WW folder. I'll help you with that in a moment. <laughs> We'll click Build. So I wanted to make this backup, which I will put into the network folder um, if you want it. And um, remember from here, the site has been archived. We want to remember to cop to download both the installer PHP file and the zip file. And we don't want to unzip the zip file. We want to keep both of those files together in a folder. So click Installer and it downloads. Click Archive and it downloads. And then you go to the folder. Open the folder where it downloaded to, most likely the desktop. So you make a folder with today's date, and you move both the installer file and the zip file into that folder. That's my handout, of course, the first part archiving the site. We've done it a few times. I'm just following my handout as always. Click to download the installer in the archive, etc. Move the zip and PHP file into a folder with today's date and keep them together. Do not unzip. So these went, in my case, to the desktop. On the desktop, I'm going to make a new folder with today's date, 2017. 16. I'm also going to put here no e-commerce. The this uh, this copy of the site does not have e-commerce. Now I'm keeping it simple dashes no na no spaces in lowercase because once we come back on Thursday we're going to set up duplicator and then the link is going to be localhost slash 2017.05.16 no e-commerce. Question. Okay, check the handout, and I'll be with you in one moment. I'll be with you in one moment. So I'm going to copy that to my uh, network folder. That's a copy of the site. We'll have some time now until 9.30. If you've made a copy of the site, if you'd like to, you can go to the plugins and start adding some of those plugins to play with it. 
But when we come back on Thursday, we will add the plugin, the WP Commerce plugin, and start to look at e-commerce.